Good afternoon, fellow cloud nerds, and welcome back to AWS reInvent 2022. We are live here from fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by Lisa Martin. So excited to be here, Lisa. It's my first reInvent. Is it really? Yeah. Oh my, I think it's only like my fourth or fifth. Oh, oh, only your fourth only. or fifth. Only. You're such a pro here There's on some Cube. serious veterans here in attendance that have been to all 11. I, I love that. Wow, yeah. go them. I know, maybe we'll be right? at that level soon. One day we will. Are you enjoying the show so far? Absolutely. It is, I cannot believe how many people are here. Yeah, what we've had 70,000, 70, and we're only seeing what's at the Venetian Expo Hall, right. not at the other hotels, so I can only I imagine. I mean, there's a world outside of this. There, yes, <laughs> and there's sunlight. Yeah. There's actual sunlight outside <laughs> of this room. <laughs> Novel idea. Well, Lisa, I'm very excited to be sitting here next to you. And to welcome our fabulous guests from Tech Systems, we have Brandon and Srini. Thank you so much for being here. How is the show going for you gentlemen so far? It's great, a lot of new insights, and the customers are going to love what AWS is, going, is releasing this reInvent. There is such a community here, and I love that vibe. It's similar to what we had at Cloud, Con, at Cloud Native Con in Detroit. So much collaboration going on. I assume most folks know uh, a lot about tech systems who are watching, but just in case they don't, Brandon, give us the pitch. You bet, so full stack IT solutions firm. Um, been in business for over 40 years. 80,000 global employees, uh, really specializing in digital transformation, enterprise modernization services. Uh, we have uh, partners in one strategy, which is an, an acquisition we made, but a well-known premier partner in the Amazon partner ecosystem, as well as One North Interactive, who is our um, boutique brand creative and digital strategy firm. So together, we really feel like we can bring full end-to-end -end solutions for digital and, and modernization initiatives. So you, I, I saw some notes where Tech Systems is saying organizations need experienced AWS partners that are not afraid doing the dirty work of digital transformation who really can advise and execute. Brandon, talk to us about how Tech Systems and AWS are working together to help customers on that journey of, which is nebulous, of digital transformation. So our, our real hallmark is the ability to scale. Um, we partner with um, AWS in a lot of different ways. In fact, we just signed our strategic collaboration agreement. Uh, so we're in the, the one percenter group uh, in the, the, the whole partner network. Um, That's a pretty casual flex there. Uh, I, not bad. I love I, that, top one percent. No wonder you're wearing that partner pin so proud today. I, I like yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we're working all the way on the advisory end, working with their pro-serve organization. Um, and then you know, transforming that into large scale mass migration services, uh, a lot of data modernization that Srini is an absolute expert in, I'm sure he can add some context to, but uh, it's been a great partnership for many years now. In the keynote, uh, Adam spent almost 52 minutes on data, right? Yeah. So it emphasizes how organizations are ready to take data to cloud and actually make meaningful insights and help their own customers uh, come out of it by making meaningful decisions. So we are glad to be part of this entire ecosystem. I love that you quantified how many minutes I know. talked about it. That it's was nice. impressive. These folks, there's a little bit of data-driven thinking going I on think here. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we can't be at an event like this without talking about data for copious amounts of time, 52 minutes, as you right. said this morning. Right, absolutely. But every company these days has to be a data company. There is no choice to be successful, to, to, to thrive, to survive, I mean, even to thrive and grow. It's a, if it's a grocery store or your local gas station or what, you name it, that company has to be a data company. But the challenge of the data volume, the explosion in data, is huge for organizations to really try to figure out and sift through what they have, oh God, where is yeah. all of it, how do we make sense of it, how do we act on it and get insights. That's a big challenge. How is Tech Systems helping customers no, that's tackle a, that challenge? Yeah, that's a great question because that's, that's the whole fun of handling data. You need to ensure its meaning is first understood, so we are not just dumping data into a storage place, yeah. but rather assign a meaningful context. In today's uh, announcement, again, the data zone was unveiled to give meaning to data. And I think those are key concrete steps that we take to our customers as well, with some good blueprints, methodical ways of approaching data, and ultimately gaining business insights. And maybe I'll add just something real quick to yeah. that. The, the theme we're seeing and hearing a lot about is data monetization. Mm -hmm. So technology co companies have figured it out and used techniques to personalize things and get you ads probably that you don't want half the time. But <laughs> now all industries are, are really looking to do that. 
um, looking at ways to open new revenue channels, looking at ways to drive um, a better customer experience, a better employee experience. We've got a ton of examples of that. Um, big oil and gas, uh, leveraging like well and machine data, coming in to um, be more efficient when they're, they're pumping and, and moving um, commodities around. We've got, we work a lot in the uh, media and entertainment space. And so obviously uh, getting targeted ads to consumers during the right um, periods of TV or, or movies or et cetera, especially with the advent of Netflix and um, all your streaming videos. So it's been uh, really interesting, but we really see the future in leveraging data as one of your biggest corporate assets. Brennan, so oh, do you ahead. still, I'm just curious on the, on the ad thing, just real quick, then I'll let you go, Lisa. Right. So do you still fall victim to, to falling for the advertising, even though you know it's been strategically put there for you to consume in that moment? Most of the time, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we all I'm do. We're all guilty. I just, you know, you're, you're, you're behind <laughs> the curtain, so to speak. So, yeah. The Amazon Prime truck shows up yeah. every day at <laughs> yeah. my house, which is, right. which is great, right? Same. Hello again. Same. But, but then the power of it is you're giving the customer what they're looking for. That's it. And, you know, exactly. You know, we have that thoughts. expectation. We want 100%. it. 100%. We know that. I agree. We don't need to buy it. Yeah. But technology has made it so easy to transact. Yep. That's like when developers started going to the cloud years ago, it was, just, it was a swipe. It was so simple. Brennan, talk about the, the changes in cloud and cloud migration that tech systems has seen, particularly in the last couple of years as every company was rushing to go digital because they had to. Yep. Um, so, several years ago, we kind of pushed away that cloud first mentality to the side. Um, and we use more of a, a cloud smart um, kind of fashion, right? Does everything need to go to the cloud? Um, no. Does things need to go, do applications, data need to go to the cloud in a way that's modern and takes advantages of what the, the cloud can provide and all the new services that are being released this week and, and ongoing? So the, the other thing we're seeing is initiatives that have, that have traditionally been in the CTO, CIO organization aren't necessarily all that successful because we, we're seeing a, a complete misalignment between business goals and IT um, achievements, outcomes, et cetera. You can automate things, you can move it to the cloud, but if you didn't solve a core business problem or challenge, right. what'd you really do? Yep. Yeah. Just to add on that, it's all about putting data and people together, yeah. and then how we can actually ensure the workforce is equally brought up to speed on these new technologies. That has been something that we have seen tremendous improvement in the last 24 months, where customers are ready to take up new challenges, and the end users are ready to learn something new and not just stick onto that status quo mindset. Where do you guys factor into bringing in AWS and the customer's cloud journeys? What is that partnership like? We always first look for where the customer is in their cloud journey path and make sure we advise them with the right next steps. And AWS having its services in the, across the spectrum makes it even easier for us to look at what business problem they are solving and then align it according to the process and technology so that at the end of the day, we want end user adoption. We don't want to build a fancy new gadget that no one uses. <laughs> what do you say? I, just because you built it doesn't mean they'll come. And I think that's, a, the, that's the correct. classic engineering marketing dilemma as well as balance. It's a healthy tension, yep. I, I would say, between both. You mentioned, Trini, you mentioned workforce uh, just a second ago. What sort of trends are you seeing in workforce development? Generally speaking, there are a lot of services now that can quantify your code for errors and then make sure that uh, you know the code that you're pushing into production is well tested. So what we are trying to make sure is a healthy mix of trying to solve a business problem and asking the right questions. Like today, in, even in the keynote, it was all about how QuickSight, for example, has additional features now that tells why something happened. And that's the kind of mindset we want our end users to adopt. Not just be uh, restricted themselves to a reactive analytics, but rather ask the question, why? Why did it happen? Why did my sales go down? And I think those technologies and mindset shift is happening across the workforce. Um, from, a, from a workforce development standpoint, we're yeah. seeing there's not enough workforce in the core skills of data, um, DevOps, uh, standard you know, cloud type work. So, we're actually a, um, an ATP advanced training partner, one of the few uh, within the, the AWS network. So we've developed programs like a rising talent program that are allowing us to bring the workforce up to the skills that are necessary in this new world. 
Um, so it's a more build versus buy strategy because the war on talent's real. Um, though it may start to wane a little bit as we change the, the macroeconomic outlook in 2023, but it's still there. And we still believe that building those workforce and investing in your people is the right thing to do. Yeah. It, it is, and I think there's a strong alignment there with AWS and, and their focus on that as well. I wanted to ask you, Brandon, Absolutely. one of the things, so, so our boss, John Furrier, the co-CEO of, of the Cube, talked with Adam Slipsky just a, a week or maybe 10 days ago. Mm -hmm. He always gets an exclusive interview with the CEO of AWS before reInvent. And one of the things that Adam shared with him was that customers, CEOs and CIOs are not coming to, to Adam, to this head of AWS, to talk about technology. Nope. They need to talk, they want to talk about transformation. Yep. He's talking about- The topic this year. Moving oh, away from amorphous topic of digital transformation yep. to business transformation. Are you seeing the same thing at, in your customers? 100%. And if you're not starting at the business level, these initiatives are going to fail. Um, we see it all the time. Again, you know, it's about that misalignment, and there's there's no good answer to that. But digital, I, I think, is amorphous to some degree. Um, we play a lot with our uh, the One North partnership that I mentioned earlier, really focusing on that that strategy element because consumer dollars are shrinking um, via inflation, via what we're heading into, and we have to create the best experience possible. Um, we have to create an omni-channel experience to get um, our products or services to market. And if we're not looking at those as our core goals and we're looking at them as IT or technology challenges, we're, we're not looking in the right place. Well, and businesses aren't going to be successful if they're looking at it in those siloed organizations. Data exactly. has to be yep. democratized. Like and we've been saying data thing. democratization for so long, but yep. really we're seeing that it has to be moving out into the lines of business because as another thing Adam shared with John Ferrier is that he sees, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on this, yeah. the role of the, the title of data analyst going away because everybody in different functions and different lines of business within an organization are going to have to be data analysts to some degree to use data, whether it's marketing, ops, sales, yeah. finance. Are you seeing the same? That is true. I mean, uh, at this point, we are all in the connected world, right? Every data point is connected in some form or shape we are another data, data point. We are many data points yeah, right. just sitting here, yeah. yeah. Absol <laughs> absolutely, so I think uh, if you are strategizing, data needs to be right in the center of it, and then your business problems need to be addressed with reliable data. No, I mean, advertising, supply chain, marketing, they're, they're all interconnected now. And, oh, we're, yeah. and we're looking at ways to bring um, a lot of that siloed data yeah. into one place so we can make use to it. And it goes back to that monetization element of our data. It's a lot about context and situational awareness. We want what we want, when we want it, even before we knew we needed it then. <laughs> yep. I think I said that right. But you know, it's, 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 it's always more faster, quicker, and then, and then scaling things up. You see a lot of different customers across verticals. You have an absolutely massive team. Give us a sneak peek into 2023. What, what does the future hold? 2023 is again, to today's keynote, I'm bringing it back because it was a keynote filled with vision and limitless possibilities. And that's what we see right now our customers, they are no longer scared to go and take the plunge into the cloud. And as Brandon said, it's all about being smart about those decisions. So to, we are very excited that together with the partnership that we recently acquired and the services and the depth, along with the horizontal domain expertise, we can actually help customers make meaningful message out of their data points and that keeps us really excited for next year. Love that. Brandon, what about you? I think the obvious one is FinOps and a, and a focus on optimization, yeah. uh, financially, security, et cetera, um, just with the changing times. Uh, the other one is I, I still think that digital is going to continue to be a, a big um, push in 2023, namely making sure that experience is yeah. at its best, whether that's employee and combating the war on talent, keeping your people, yeah. or opening new revenue streams, um, enhancing existing revenue streams, you got to keep working on, on that. We got to keep the people happy with the machines That's and right. the systems that we are building, as, you do. as we all know. But I, it's very nice, there's been a lot of human-centric focus and, and a lot of customer obsession here at the show. We know it's a big thing for y'all, for Amazon, for pretty much everyone who sat here. Hopefully it is in general. <laughs> Hopefully there's nobody who doesn't care about their community. We're not talking to them if that's the case. We have a new challenge on theCUBE for the show this okay. year as we kind of prepped you for, and you can call it a bumper sticker, you can call it a 30 second sizzle reel, but this is sort of your Instagram moment, your TikTok, your thought leadership highlight. What's the most important story coming out of the show? Shrini, you've been 
you've been quoting the keynotes very well, so I'm going to you first on this one. I, I think overall, it's all about owning the change. In, in our tech systems culture, it's all about striving for excellence through serving others and owning the change. And so it makes me very excited that when we get that kind of keynote resonating the same message that we imbibe culturally, that's a big win-win for all the companies. It's all about the shared vision. A lot of people with similar vision in this room right yeah. now. In this yep. room, like it's a room. It's a massive expo center, just to be clear. I'm sure everyone can see in the background. Brandon? I would say partnership. Um, continuing to enhance uh, yeah. our strategic partnership with AWS. Continuing to be our, our customers, partners in transformation. Uh, and bringing those two things together here has been uh, a predominance of my time this week and will continue throughout the week. But um, we're in it together with our customers and with AWS and looking forward to the future. Man, what a, that's a beautiful note to, to end on there. Brandon Trini, thank you both so much for being here with us. Fantastic to learn from your insights and, and to continue to emphasize on this theme of collaboration. We look forward to the next conversation with you. Thank all of you for tuning in wherever you happen to be hanging out and watching this fabulous live stream or the replay. We are here at AWS reInvent 2022 in wonderful sunny Las Vegas, Nevada with Lisa Martin. My name is Savannah Peterson. We are theCUBE, the leading source for high-tech coverage. <laughs>